This paper is about computational video editing for dialogue-driven scenes. Digital cameras make it easy for filmmakers to record many versions or takes of a scene. I am not buying that kid a Christmas present. Stacy. He is a bad kid. He's family. Each new take can provide a unique camera framing. I am not buying that kid a Christmas present. I am not buying that kid a Christmas present. I am not buying that kid a Christmas present. Or performance. Stacy, Stacy, Stacy. And skilled editors know how to combine multiple takes to build a stronger narrative than any one recording could capture. For instance, here's an excerpt of our scene put together by a professional human editor from 15 different input takes. Stacy. He's a bad kid. He's family. Are you sure that your cousin is his real father? Because I'm pretty sure that kid is the spawn of Satan. Come on now, that's a bit dramatic. Oh, really? Yeah. You're going to make me regret saying that, aren't you? By carefully cutting between different framings and performances, the editor was able to control the visual style and emotional tone of the scene. Unfortunately, the process of editing a scene like this is slow and largely manual. The first thing an editor usually does is actually watch all of the input takes, and that alone can be pretty time-consuming. Then the editor has to manually segment each take into clips and arrange those clips on a shared timeline to tell a story. This is an especially tedious process which makes creative exploration of different editing styles very difficult. For example, our hand-edited sequence runs just 73 seconds long, but it took our professional editor three hours to create with existing tools. In this paper, we show that by focusing on a particular but extremely common type of scene, namely dialogue-driven scenes, we can create much more efficient computational tools for editing. Our approach is based on what are called film editing idioms in cinematography. These are rules of thumb that editors use to relay editing decisions to the narrative of a scene. Things like, start with a wide-angle shot to establish where the scene takes place, or use close-ups to intensify particularly emotional lines. Our system uses audio, video, and text analysis to extract a variety of labels from several input takes and a common script. It then segments each take into separate clips for each line of dialogue, and aligns these with the text of our script. We then present these segmented and aligned takes to the user for editing. Organizing the takes like this already saves a lot of time, but the real power of our system comes from the ability to do idiom-based editing. At the bottom here we see our idiom builder where users can combine several basic idioms to design different editing styles. Here we start with one of the most basic idioms, which says that performers should be visible in our edit while they are speaking. We now click Generate to automatically produce an edit that best satisfies the specified idioms across our entire scene. Now we see an edited version of the scene with the aligned script on its left and alternative clip choices sorted by similarity on the right. In this edit, we notice what filmmakers call a jump cut. He's a bad kid. He's family. Are you sure your cousin is his real father? This kind of cut doesn't really work with the cinematic style that we're going for, so we'll add a no jump cuts idiom to the builder and generate a new sequence. This sequence is better, but now we notice that the camera is focusing more on the character Ryan, and we want to emphasize Stacy a bit more. We do this by adding another idiom, letting it know that we'd like to emphasize Stacy during quick exchanges between the actors. Finally, we'll add our start wide idiom to establish the scene, and to save some time, we'll add an idiom that prefers faster paced performances by the actors. Let's take a look at our edited sequence. I am not buying that kid a Christmas present. Stacy. He's a bad kid. He's family. Are you sure your cousin is his real father? Because I'm pretty sure he's the spawn of Satan. Come on now, that's a bit dramatic. Oh, oh really? Yeah. You're going to make me regret saying that, aren't you? He called my Nana dirty. I know. To her face. I know. You know she has a medical condition. I'm aware. Look, I'll admit he can be a bit insensitive. He dropped my sister's dog out a window. We don't know that. He tried to blame it on terrorists. Okay, that was pretty bad. But don't think of it as a gift for him. It's for the family. We're keeping a tradition alive. Fine. But I get to pick the present. God, what did you have in mind? A donation. What? I'll make a donation to charity in his name. He'll hate it. Exactly! <laughs> That's why it's perfect. It's the only person I know who could turn a charitable donation into something spiteful and vindictive. He killed my sister's dog, Ryan. He killed Fluffles. Now let's use our idioms to create an edit that looks really different. Here we'll emulate a style that's very popular among YouTube vloggers. 
where jump cuts and a fixed camera are used to speed up dialogue, giving the video a fast-paced, high-energy feel. Here's an example. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dear Eyes. Just because there was so many comments in the last video, the reason why there's rings in my eyes, I don't know if you guys can see it, everybody kept saying things like, why does his eyes look so weird? I've done this before, I've had, it's just a light, guys, it's a ring light. So let's name this new style our YouTube style. Now we still wanna see the speaker, so we'll start by adding the visible speaker idiom. Then since we're going for that hyperactive feel, we'll add the fast performance idiom. To give it a single camera vlog look, we'll use an idiom that keeps the zoom consistent. Then we're gonna use our jump cut idiom again, but this time we're gonna set the weight to negative one, which means that our algorithm will actively try to violate this idiom. And to finish things off, we'll set some tempo parameters to try and remove any pauses that might otherwise come between lines. Let's see how we did. You're gonna make me regret saying that, aren't you? He called my Nana dirty. I know. To her face. I know. You know she has a medical condition. I'm aware. Look, I'll admit he can be a bit insensitive. He dropped my sister's dog out the window. I don't know that. He tried to blame it on terrorists. Okay, that was pretty bad, but... These results and more on a variety of scenes with a variety of different styles can be found in our supplemental material. Thank you for watching.